Yes, Glenn, I'm going to make you Johnny on the spot a little bit here. We did get uh, some information about that filing in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case. It's a reply brief. And so to just get people who are tuning in caught up to speed, there was an appeal done by Donald Trump. Uh, the New York AG's office has been filing its arguments in front of the appellate court. Donald Trump has done the same, as we just noted. But, Glenn, it's, it's stuff that was already argued in front of Judge Justice Arthur Ngoron. So your thoughts kind of quickly before we move on to that joint status report, your thoughts about what's next in this process? Yeah, Katie, Donald Trump's lawyers seem to be the king of repetition. You know, in every yeah. case, they make the same old arguments over and over and over, largely, as you mentioned, for delay. I mean, how many times did they ask Judge Mershon in the criminal trial in New York to recuse himself? I think we are up to four and counting, and they are rejected every time. And I think any time he files a repetitious claim that has been rejected by courts previously, they're going to be rejected again. So, Glenn, let's move on to that joint status report. That was definitely something we were waiting for last night. It got filed at the 11th hour, no pun intended, right? So I'm really focusing on this because Jack Smith wants to file something that he's called an opening brief. And he wants to do this because he wants to explain to Judge Chutkin why the immunity issues in the Supreme Court's immunity ruling do not apply now to the superseding indictment that he filed earlier this week. But then, as I noted... Donald Trump just wants to basically delay it. In fact, Trump says you can't even get to the immunity arguments until you deal with the fact of whether or not special counsel Jack Smith can even proceed on this case. Yeah, Katie, this is a joint status report, which should be kind of a boring run-of-the-mill uh, submission to the court. It's 10 pages long. It's anything but boring and run-of-the-mill. There is one what I would call money line, and it's on page two. The first two pages are Jack Smith saying, Listen, Judge Chutkin, the Supreme Court has returned the case to you to litigate the presidential immunity issue in the aftermath of the guidance the Supreme Court handed down. And in the first two pages, uh, Jack Smith proposes to do just that. And here is what I would call the money line. He says that the government, the prosecutors, propose that it will file a brief in which we will explain why immunity does not apply to the categories of allegations in the superseding the new indictment or, and here is, I think, the important information, or additional unpled categories of evidence that the government intends to introduce at trial and will mm -hmm. put in this brief. What does that mean? Wow. Finally, it means that even though we know some of the information about Donald Trump's crimes and conduct, because we've read both the original 45-page indictment and the newly released 36-page indictment. Jack Smith just said, Judge, Judge Chutkin, I'm going to put lots of other information and evidence about Donald Trump's crimes and conduct so you have it all, so you can make a decision about whether each thing Donald Trump did was official or unofficial, might enjoy immunity or shouldn't enjoy immunity. And, of course, Donald Trump's lawyers for the next seven and a half pages put a bunch of nonsense in there designed to delay the case. And specifically, they set out a timetable through uh, spring or fall of 2025, and they don't even get to the immunity question. Why? Because they don't want any of that new evidence and information coming out before the election or at any other time if they can help it. Now, what remains to be seen is when will Judge Chutkin say, OK, we're going to litigate this issue I want the briefs. Will they be September? Will they be October? Because, Katie, those briefs, according to what Jack Smith said, are likely to contain a whole bunch of information that the grand jury knows about Donald Trump's crimes, but that the American people do not yet know about. Yeah, that critical adjective, Glenn, that you're pointing out is the, quote, unpled. The unpled evidence, the unpled allegations, meaning they actually haven't been included in the language of the superseding indictment, and that is that evidence about which the grand jury knows, but America hasn't seen. And I, I will note also that this is not going to be filed under seal, meaning if, if Jack Smith does this opening brief, everybody, including all of us, gets to read it. I, I did want to say, though, something that really bothered me, Glenn, about what Trump did in his proposed deadlines is when he said that the special counsel appointment issue has to be determined first, he cited to two things. One was Justice Clarence Thomas's concurrence in that immunity opinion, and the other was Judge Cannon's dismissal of the classified documents espionage case. What does that tell you, Glenn, then, 
about what Trump's trying to do when it comes to getting immunity decided later and special counsel Jack Smith's appointment decided first? Well, to any attorney who cares about and understands the rules when it comes to briefing up a case, there's a real problem when there's a controlling Supreme Court precedent, the Nixon case from 1974, which said, of course, special counsel is not only lawful, but Richard Nixon has to comply with a subpoena to turn over the tapes. Um, courtesy of a subpoena issued by that lawfully appointed special prosecutor. And when a, when a defense attorney refuses, declines to put that kind of controlling, contrary authority in a brief, that is not going to win him any points with Judge Chutkin or any other judge. Um, so, but it's clear what they're trying to do. They want to try to stack all of these other motions um, on the calendar before they ever get to the crimes Donald Trump committed. And, and Katie, that is why the Supreme Court remanded this case to Judge Chutkin. It was to resolve the immunity question, which is what's supposed to be resolved first. Because as we all know, immunity, you can appeal it presently. You don't have to wait until the end of the trial. Donald Trump's lawyers, I don't think, did themselves any service by filing this motion, which was largely non-responsive to what the question was that was to be addressed and decided. I think Trump has once again underestimated judges that actually will go toe to toe with him. And one of those judges is Tanya Chuckin. Glenn Kirshner, thanks for getting us started and for getting us caught up on all things Trump legal because justice matters. It's good to see you.